They grew up together, they played the same sports, went to the same schools, and now they even teach together. You're listening to DC and DH on the D&D Dynamite 80s. Let's start another one right now. DH, take it away, my friend. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the D&D Dynamite 80s. I'm DH. I'm DC. And we're here to take another fantastic look at the best decade ever. Let's just say it, the 80s. And well, we were younger then, that's for sure. We were a uh, lot younger then. Lot younger. <laughs> that, that makes it good, doesn't it? <laughs> that, that was before when I, like, now when I get up in the morning, I'm like that Rice Krispie right. cereal, everything. Right. Crack it's going to be cracking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. <laughs> hey. saying, I, am, I am stoked about this one, brother. I've been, you better believe it, man. I, I've been waiting on this one and so excited. So Absolutely. with all these other ado, I'm going to... Yeah. Turn it over to you. Yeah, this yeah. One rolling. yeah, we're excited this evening to have Bill Chaplin and his wife, Tamara, is going to be joining us here in a little no, bit. No, 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 no. We're wrong. Champlin and my wife, Tamara. Tamara, okay, uh, and Champlin. Yeah. Excuse me. And yeah. uh, we, we have you guys on uh, from the West Coast tonight. We appreciate you taking some time with us. Sure. How are you, Bill? Good. I'm okay. You know, I mean, working a little bit here, and I've been in the studio quite a bit. We just got a new song that we always look look at it like ah, i got a tiger by the tail we got to go in and just live that song for a couple of days and then when we're done we're like well now what do we do we're gonna write another right. one you know? <laughs> like that. right um talk to me about uh some of the i think i read somewhere where one of your um the people that you kind of admired and looked up in the business was uh elvis's influence well, when I was a, when I was a little kid, and I'm pretty, yeah. talking pretty little, uh, uh, you know, when Elvis came out, I just, you know, I bought the whole thing, hook, line, and sinker. Sure. It was the first real rock and roll I heard. I lived in Santa Barbara, California at the time, okay. so I mean, you you could you could see there wasn't a whole lot of R and B or rock and roll or really rockabilly for that matter. I think my sister had brought home uh, Bill Haley and the Comets record, and that's the first real rock and roll record that I'd seen. And mm. then when I when I got a, a, a when I got you know I saw Elvis I immediately had to play guitar, you know I mean because it, it it sounded better than the broomstick and rope I had, <laughs> mouthing you know <laughs> trying to <laughs> sing along with his records and and yeah. in the in the reflection in a in a tall window, <laughs> right right and that you know I still try to get a nice sound out of that broom and rope but it's just so far. <laughs> I haven't been able to record with it yet. You know, <laughs> ain't gonna stop me. I'm gonna keep trying. Right, it. keep trying it. Um, <laughs> um, that's right. Well, I know you worked a long time with the, uh, Jason Chef, and uh, and uh, his obviously his dad Jerry was with Elvis. Yeah, I worked uh, with Jerry on, uh, on. So that's what I was about I, to ask you. Yeah, yeah. When I, I first moved to town. Wow. I was, okay. I was doing some tracks with uh, actually David Foster, David Page. Wow. Uh, Jeff Vaccaro was on drums and Jerry Chef was on bass. Was one of the first sessions I did. I think I was playing organ or yeah, singing. Yeah. Some. I don't even remember what I was doing. This, right. this is a long time ago. And you must remember, <laughs> I, I spent top dollar on my memory loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, right. But uh, yeah, I've known Jerry for a long time. He's a good bass player. He's one yeah, of the better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. That uh, It's ironic that it he lines told up kind of like that. told us some great stories. I had, bet. That was my had, next thing. I bet he did. Had, yeah, I mean, me and, <laughs> him and, me and Jason and uh, and Jerry were hanging out in, uh, uh, I think it was a hotel room in Philadelphia. And I think we played a gig the next night. But he, he told us a story of Bob Wills, who, who would go around and play all these little, you know, roadhouses. Uh-huh. But apparently, from what I understand, and from according to the story, he was a bit of a drinker, and the and he would make it three songs and have to leave the stage because he's just <laughs> cranked already. And uh, and the and the the uh, the promoters that normally you know uh, hired that band would uh, they they change their their uh, contracts. Say Bob has to spend at least one set on the stage, so. For a little while, he was pretty cool. You know, the band sounded good. He was sounded good. He was sober or close to it, better than gone, you know. 
And uh, and one day they were they sound checked at a place and they said, uh, we're going to go get dinner. You want to go? He said, no, nah, I'm just going to take a nap. So he, he's in the back room. They come back. He's catatonic drunk. You know what I mean? And his shoes are off. His, his cowboy boots are off. His shirt's unbuttoned. His hat's somewhere around there. I mean, it's just gone. So they go, you know, it, well, none of us are getting paid if he doesn't spend so many, this, this much time on the stage. It's contracted. So they take his boots, cram them onto his feet, button up his shirt, get everything going, and bring him up, up there. And there's two violin players, and each one of them have a, a butt next to him in the crook of the piano on the stage, holding him up. <laughs> With that period, I mean, he'd start slipping and they'd stop playing and pick him up and and then and, and just, you know, and that was kind of what was going on. They're going to make the contract. They're going to make the bread tonight. Simple as that. <laughs> Musicians, you got to love that move. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh, man, we should call We should call a lawyer. No, no, we're just going to hold him up and that's how it's going to go. And all during the time he was up there, he was going, socks, socks. <laughs> And they didn't fit. What the hell is this guy trying to say? You know, socks. Well, they finally, they finally, they passed the time where they're going to get paid no matter what. And they, they walk him back down to the, to the dressing room right off the stage. And they, and they went to pull his, pull his, his uh, boots off and his socks were stuck down in the toe of the boots. <laughs> they, 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 they just crammed on his feet. So Jason and I, for the next maybe year, it was, we, this was long before any of your monitors or anything. But the next year, we'd pass each other on stage. I'd be playing guitar, I'd be playing bass. And we'd pass each other, and on the way around, passing each other, be like, socks. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I kept, kept us laughing. You know, hey, those yeah, guys are having yeah. a good time. Now we're just telling jokes we heard, you know. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't mean to digress into sock land. Hey, Tam. Hi, hi. Do I need you? headphones? Hey, guys. No, I'm hi. Up, I'm hi. Hello. Phone. Who are you? Try talking. Hi there. Hi. How are you? We can hear you. Welcome. Yeah. Thank How you are you doing? doing? Great. Doing great. Thank you we for taking some time. We finally made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having some time yeah. for us today. We appreciate it. I'm going to click if we want to switch. How about I have to say it? One of the uh, one of the things I was kind of wondering. I mean, you've kind of played, I guess, in just about every type of facility, arenas, or mm -hmm. whatever. Is there a certain type of facility that you prefer over others? I've always wondered that. I've had mm -hmm. uh, on some of the interviews we had, some of the artists have preferred like smaller, more intimate, some larger. I just kind of wondered what your thoughts on are that. You mean aside from the Goldberg bar, bar mitzvah? <laughs> Hey, that's that. included. It's all included. Yeah, oh, yeah, all any, of, any of those. Yeah. They're a wonderful family. Uh, <laughs> you know, we did a thing. It was right after Jason joined the band, actually. We did a thing. It uh, was called the We the People Festival. And it was a maybe, and it was in Philadelphia. Uh, and they set up a scaffolding, big stage in front of those stairs that, that uh, Sylvester Stallone ran up in Rocky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Up. It was right there. And then there's a big park. And then there's Philadelphia. And they had, the park was packed all the way up and in 13 or 14 blocks into the city itself. Oh, wow. And they had time speakers and they had the whole nine yards. And there was a, they said there was an, an, at least a half a million people there. Wow. I was going, well, this, this ain't exactly a club gig. In, <laughs> in the you know what I mean? So I remember telling Jason, I said, don't look at eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at foreheads if you want. To. I said, but, you know, if you actually connect with anybody, anybody out there, it's gonna freak you out. So just, just you know, pay attention to the music. What I dug about it is Grover or Grover Cleveland, Grover, Grover Washington Jr. Okay. was playing before us, and we oh, had him wow. sit in on uh, just you and me. Wow. And I was going, hey man, you guys, you guys played a, for half a million people. I said, yeah, and I got to jam with Grover Washington Jr. <laughs> That's kind of what I, what I had in my mind. That's what the gig was for me. But I mean, it's every once in a while you run into one that just works. It just sounds beautiful, and uh, and and you also run across. Sometimes you play a really really great room, and it's something's wrong, something's missing, because you get so used to playing, you know, toilets, you know, <laughs> echoey. You know, you're looking right. for the echo and stuff like that. But one thing I do know is is it like basketball courts. The guitars always sound good because there's wood everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, I'm about the guitars in a in a basketball. In a basketball yeah. Court. 
What about that? Interesting. We played one when we started playing, and and uh, and Bobby Knight was the uh, was the was the coach of the team, and they had just lost a game, and and he sent up somebody uh, sent a runner upstairs. He was down in the in the locker room. He sent a runner upstairs. Says, have those guys stop that racket. I'm trying to talk to my team. <laughs> <laughs> And my our road manager Jack Gowdy at the time said, "No, <laughs> if he wants to talk to me, have him come on up." <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! Well, how uh, how has it been to work on your own stuff? For for it's got to be rewarding to put out your own I've stuff. Been working on my own stuff yeah. my whole life. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just because I was in a band didn't stop me from making solo albums. I made a bunch yeah. of them. Yeah. Tamara made some albums during that period of time. I went. I mean, we got a break yeah. from Chicago, and I flew to, to uh, London right after. You know, right on the. You know, I went to sleep, got <laughs> up. Everybody went went back to L.A. I flew to London, and we were working on her album. In London. Oh wow! Yeah, awesome. yeah. and Fantastic. so I mean, it, at one point when I first joined the band, the guys, you know, the guys that. Well, we got a month off, and everybody looked like they were in Hawaii, and I looked like I was back in the studio. I started. Yeah, I that's what you did. Yeah. While yeah. I was in the band, Bill I, had to get back on the road to get some rest. Yeah, that's <laughs> how it came down. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah, I, I think that, that's one of the the cool things I've been listening uh, since DC shared everything. I've been kind of listening to some different tracks, and I I wasn't. And I mean, I, everybody was kind of a Chicago fan, but I really, the stuff you're doing now is just amazing to me. And for some reason, I really enjoy it so much more than, I guess, most music that's out there today, to be honest with you. It just I noticed together. you guys were playing uh, CWF. Uh, it's a fantastic album. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that was, that, that was a song that we did. We had Michael yeah. McDonald come in and sing. Oh, my on. God. Joseph Williams. Weird. We had Stefan yeah. Gunnarsson, who's a, who's the keyboard player who we work with a lot. We've written a lot with, yeah, with Stefan. Right. Okay. He came in with a kind of a great little track, and Tamara went, "Oh my God, play that track again!" And she had the lyrics that she had written just on the fly, just the, that morning or a couple of days before, a couple of days right before. before that, and they're really fresh on on my mind because it was a young kid that that committed suicide and it was a horrible thought you know but it was a great little singer but it, and, but it was really a beautiful good. memorial in a way that's like yeah. you know it's like if all the love in the world could change anything you know yeah. mm -hmm. and, and and she she just had these lyrics just sitting there and it went and, boom and it trying fit to explain on like it, it to was... a swedish guy is not what you want to do because they want it all light and, and poppy and everything but i didn't want it the story almost kind of got in the way of the of the real lyric, the lyric wasn't anything like that deep, you know, didn't hit that hard. You, it made you wonder, maybe, but it, it wasn't anything, you know. So it was right. a beautiful yeah. lyric. It was pretty. And, you know, uh, but it, anyway, and there was some, we asked Michael to, to sing with us, and, and that was he I, came over and tore everybody up completely. The, he started that guy can do it. time, news, and weather and make a hit out. <laughs> you know. It's amazing. Yeah, that's what I was, what I was about to say. Right. When he was singing, yeah. I was just like giddy laughing. Right. Right. But he did one thing that he'd never done before. And it's on that record. He just did a lick that was in this uh, kind of the weirdest little place that was so funky it could move in next door and your lawn would die. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> funky. And, and That's uh, pretty bad. So, but let me let me clean that up. I'll make that a little more uh, uh, deliberate. I said, no, nah, you ain't touching that with a ten foot pole. I, think, I mean, I'm a <laughs> fan, and I you know when I hear somebody not, it was perfect. Lick, yeah, yeah. Before, that sucker's staying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. I guess it's all right. And uh, real. what a sweetie pie. And and his wife Amy. Uh, Amy yes, Holmes, I seen that. Yeah, yeah, all of us, all four of us sang it. As did Joe Williams. Yes, uh, who's with Toto right now? I think. Yeah, doing some work. Yeah, he's I seen him back he's when he was in Nashville. Right now. Yeah, <laughs> they were back in uh, uh, Nashville here in April. I, I think. They yes. Were. Yeah, they're tearing them up everywhere they go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Why? Speaking, speaking I have of one that. word. Toto. God. It's, right. Right. Well, that, that leads me into my next question for either one of you or both of you. Why do you think this 80s decade kind of stuff or the sound like that is even for young people today, it's still popular stuff. And, and these these guys are still there's a lot of them still out there performing it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, you can take that. Chicago's still on the road yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for us, uh, and I think for especially for Toto at that point of the game, David Page uh, kind of established a, a, a certain thing when he did, when he, he co wrote a lot of the Silk Degrees record with Boss Cat. Mm. And then he went, wait a minute, I'm just getting, you know, I'm getting writers, but I'm not getting any more, you know, I'm not producing this when I should be. And, uh, and he just said, let's start a band. So he called Jeff and he called, uh, uh, Jeff and he called Hungate, David Hungate, who's one of the best musicians on the earth. He lives there, lives over there. And, uh, and, uh, and Luke was, was tearing it up. Steve Lukather was tearing it up. Right. And he, he got Bobby Kimball to sing because uh, he'd met him on, at some level. Bobby was out there uh, with a group called Ship of Fools and, oh. uh, and Steve Precaro. So they had two Precaros in the band. Later on, they had three. Right. And uh, there was just something about what that was. It was, so, it was basically pop with a little shade of R&B and a, and a, a, a teeny shade of jazz, but uh, is just creative inside of it. it they, you know, they went to different places. And I think when you think about it, I mean, think about David Foster, who was kind of working around town around the same time, and paying attention to what they were doing. And then, and then he and I worked together and went, okay, we're going to do this now. And, uh, and I'd worked with him as a, as a, just as his background singer on numerous of uh, some of his earlier projects that he did. And he was just, uh, there's such great musicians that instead of just going in and playing what they're being told to play and going home, they're writing it. And I think that's where it really got better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The music just got a little more educated, you know, yeah. without being, you know, uh, uh, what is the word for it? Without just being uh, uh, college-y, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm not sure what the word is. But yeah. it's just, a, just the right amount of education, the right amount of pop, the right amount of funk and 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 R and B, yeah, and uh, and a little teeny taste of jazz in there. And yeah. Goodnight Gracie, that was that's what started, what what they called West Coast music for years. And I think they're calling it yacht rock now. Yeah. Whoever came up with that name, I'd like to swear out a warrant for. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we listen to, to the yacht rock station on uh, on Sirius XM and. The guy who talks, well, good to yacht rock. <laughs> just going, kill that guy. I want to kill this guy. You're killing us. <laughs> by the way, you're referring to it, just the way you're right. talking about it. Like, right, right. You know. yeah. Yeah. But that's the way it is. And, and it's, it's kind of crazy in that uh, in Scandinavia and in certain parts of Europe and Japan, for some reason, they really latched onto this kind of music a lot. Well, and I think Steely Dan was really ground floor for this one. They started a kind of go a little deeper than dirty work and and uh, ricky you know yeah. they, when they started to, to let the music carry them somewhere instead of going no i don't want to go there i want to i want to stay in this because it's worked before i think that's there was a period of time where people just went well let the music just take it where it goes mm -hmm. and uh, and i think for a while that's really great then all of a sudden when people heard it they went great i love that don't change now you got a lot of West Coast fans that unless it sounds just like an early Toto record or an early Chicago right. record or an early Foster or, my, or me, they're, they're like, no, 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 that's not, the, that's not West Coast. That's not what we want. But it was the letting go and letting it fly a little bit is what made that music in the first place. So I think, which is I think one of the main tools, one of the main devices of what became West Coast music. I think one of the cool things for, for me, and I know DC will kind of echo this, as teachers, as high school teachers, when we see our students listening to music from the 80s, and, it, and especially, you know, the different genres of music from the 80s, and they're coming in, they're going, hey, have you ever heard this song? We're like, really? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've heard that song. So it, it's that longevity that I think it's just, it was just different. There were so many different blends of music in the 80s and for me today most music is like there's certain categories and it's all the same there's some really great stuff out there but you listen closely to it and the ones that knock you out are the ones that have a little different progressions musical progressions and i think for, i mean i started listening to stuff 
and and I'm going. There's just some great Pro Tools programming. There's I mean you know digital programming going on. They're they're finding ways to do really cool stuff, but it's all over the same four or five progressions. Mm -hmm. You know C A F G of course. You know and then G A F C and then you know you have like that the four combinations of that and then and then a couple of other little things it just moves that the, the progressions are now listen to that and then listen to after the love is gone yes that progression is you know there's there's some well this seems kind of similar this, yeah. this is familiar this is familiar boom what is that right what is that? right right one of the reasons that that record was so cool is it had kind of had two chords you know, you had that something happened along the way. Well, people heard for sure the record, they said, that's a cool little chorus. It's a funky yeah. little yeah. thing. Yeah. And then, oh, after, and then it just goes to after the, the, the real chorus, like, holy smoke, what is this about? You right, know? right. And, and that's one thing that I've always loved about David Foster. His progressions were always really, really cool. And then I think people started to tame up the progressions a little bit. The progressions weren't quite as important as the video. You know, yeah. I mean, when yeah. MTV started, it was like, okay, we're going to have some stars pretty quick, and that'll be the end of the rest of us. We'll be out of here in no time. And pretty much the way it came down. What you What know. are you guys uh, currently working on? What you doing? You doing a little touring and recording? No, I mean, you know, I, I go out occasionally. And I do, you know, I do a couple, some of the Grammy songs that I've done. One of uh -huh. them is after uh -huh. the love. Uh, yep. The other one is Turn Your Love Around, the George Benson tune. Yeah, uh, which I've rearranged for my for myself. I'm actually me and Tom Saviano we arranged it a couple of years back, and uh, got just to make it mine. And I sang three or four Chicago songs that I was known for singing. Look away, um, which is also on, on one yeah. of your album. Typically rearranged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I did. don't want to live without your love. I've typically yeah. rearranged that. You know, right, right. Just for live versions, just live stuff. You just sure. want to have something that you can sink your teeth into, and. Uh, so I mean, all of that's really all of that's been, uh, you know, I, I haven't done it as much as a lot of guys do. And mm -hmm. Bobby Kimball for a long time was the guru of the, uh, what is it? His lawyer once called it the uh, the fabulous formers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, guys okay. that are really really great singers. Yeah. That that are still want to sing, but they're not in the bands anymore. I all mean, right. Jimmy Jamison did it for a long time before he kind of went back to to Survivor. Uh, John Elefante is one of the best singers on the earth. He sang with Kansas for a long time, but I run into him on some of these gigs, and you know, we usually all have a really, really good time. You know, it's yeah. just because hey, here we are. Alex Lidgetwood is great. He, he sang "I'm Winning" with with Santana. Yep, yep. You know, Alex at all is great. One of the best singers I've ever worked with. Yeah, he says, "Yeah, Carlos hired me seven times and fired me eight. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, by one of the funniest people I've ever met. Oh my gosh! <laughs> a ball, and he's a great little guitar player and a sweet singer. Just one yeah. of the best. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys so much. Can y'all hang just a minute as we close out with you guys, and uh, we'll close the show and come yeah. back to you here for just a second. But before we close out, DC, yeah. I would like to to ask Bill and Tamara if they would share where everyone can. Yes, please. Find your your music. Find out about y'all. Follow you. Keep up with what's going on. I can't hear what you said. Okay, I'm gonna how, how we how we can follow. Oh, uh, stop, stop. Yet. Put these on. I don't need the headphones. <laughs> yeah, <you do. laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, just let us know where we can follow. You know, our folks can follow you on social media. All that good stuff. Well, find, I'm, find your music and all that. Yeah, uh, I'm on yeah. Instagram and Facebook and mm -hmm. Twitter and um, Spotify. I'm just starting to put things out. I did a whole bunch yeah. of really great recordings in nashville several i mean a long time way back and there's just no label for them and they all managed to get cuts you know and everything on them and mm -hmm. everything but, but my my recordings of them were were masters they were just really good i i did i just put out i'm not your lover and it's on spotify for download and everything yep. so i'm going to do one of the others like you know i'm just, just trying to get them all out there because i wrote them mostly with my co-writer a lot of them with Dennis McCoskey and Michael Caruso and Dennis produced them down there, produced the tracks down there. And I mean, we, we ended up doing them a little bit everywhere, but yeah. we did this, yeah. um, 
we got we've got so many of them i just thought he said just put them out there put them, <laughs> you know? yeah put some out yeah. there's nothing sure. to wait for at this point yeah yeah awesome so, so they're on you know little yeah. by little i'm dri you know dribbling them out to uh to spotify you know gotcha. you should mention that yeah. we got a couple of records that were selling here yeah and we ha we have a lot of things on um on bill's label i mean bill's um website on okay. billsample.com so a lot of the Wonderful. underground that i'm saying on in the uh I don't know if CWF is. If that's not no. available, there. No, you can get that on Amazon. But you can but. definitely get that, like at uh, yeah, I got it off Apple. Uh, that's where I purchased it. Yeah. yeah. Most of the stuff is is you know iTunes and Spotify yeah. sure. and all that kind of Sure. But mine aren't mine aren't on his like his website, but all our merchandise and all that other stuff. Is gotcha. There. And Very mine's good. just kind of coming out. I'm just starting to put all mine out there as I as time you know a little bit as, at a time, but sure. Kind of. Sure. Put it out there anyway. Basically, due to popular demand, people say, "I want to hear more Tamara." We want, yeah. I'm tired of <laughs> old. What's his name? <laughs> no, All, right, okay. All right, DH. All right, ladies and gentlemen. George Harrison was was hanging. We'll let with, the uh, yeah, we'll let them uh, oh, hang with us here just a second. <laughs> and, uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Yeah. No, you're fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for another episode of D and D Dynamite '80s. Remember. Uh, we'd like you to find us on Spotify, Anchor, Breaker Radio, Google Podcasts, Radio Republic. You can find us uh, on, um, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, all that stuff. Dynamite Instagram. 80s. Instagram, D&D &D Dynamite it. 80s. Uh, we're, we're now two twits out in the Twittersphere. D &D that sums 80s. us up pretty good. Yeah, yes. big time. <laughs> you can check out our website, D&D &D Dynamite 80s. Yep. And, don't forget our fabulous sponsors. DC, why don't you cover those for us? I'll do that. I'll do that for us. We would like to thank our sponsors, Hudson's Flags and More, better known and operated. Also, the Nesting Project of Smyrna, Tennessee. We appreciate all their support. Check them out online. Bill, Tamara, we really appreciate you doing this tonight. We appreciate you taking the time, and we're going to play out with a little bit of music here. Yep. Please so, so check them out. Check yeah, out the music, check out their website, buy the merchandise. Fabulous, fabulous music here. If you start listening, you're going to get addicted. You're going to hear some of the fun. And folks, as we wrap it up, I'll be to see you next time. So make sure you're kind to you. Absolutely. We appreciate your time. Best to you. And safe travels. Okay, guys. You're good, huh? All right. Take care. Bye-bye.